Peter Morisi and Steve Moore of the Wall Street Journal. He's also a Fox News contributor. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Peter, let me start with you. The labor force participation rate is at the same level it was in 1978. What were you doing in 1978? Does this feel like 1978 all over again? Well, I was beginning my career in Washington as a, as a young analyst at a nonprofit. No, 1978 felt bad. That was not a great year, but it felt a lot better than this. I mean, four years into the recovery, and we're at this low level of adult participation. This is a very sick labor market. Most of the new jobs are part-time. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Steve, picking up on that point, three out of five of the new jobs that have been created since the beginning of the year are part-time. I mean, you see people out there picketing and, and you know whether they're real picketers yeah. or not that part-time wage is not enough to support a family you don't want three out of five jobs to be part-time yeah the tragedy of this uh, this recovery has been that so many people um, with college degrees and people who are heads of households have to work at McDonald's or have to work at Walmart or have to work uh, at a retail store and, and you know that's a tragedy because you can't raise a family on that kind of a job but you're exactly right those are the kinds of jobs the economy uh, has been created I looked at the numbers over the last year of almost 800,000 of the new jobs have been in either retail or restaurant industry yeah. and, and that's a big problem and you know by the way I was very surprised Melissa that we saw no growth in construction jobs and yeah. very little growth in manufacturing when we were supposed to be seeing this big boom in housing and in, um, in auto production. No, absolutely. And Peter, you know, 312,000 people this month just gave up entirely. They said, forget it. I can't take it. I'm not, I don't want to work any, I don't want to look for work anymore because I'm so discouraged. Um, why is this? Why, what is it? I mean, people have been debating this on every network all day. Why is it that we're seeing such a slow recovery? Are there things we could be doing that would speed it up? Or is it just the depth of the financial crisis? And this is what we're left oh, with. No, it's not the depth of the financial crisis. Part of it is the dysfunctions in the banks. Uh, a good deal of credit is being made, but it's student loans, it's junk bonds to weak companies. But we can't do mortgage banking, it seems. Uh, I think it's time to break up the big banks uh, because their interests lie in something other than banking at, at J.P. Morgan and the others. Uh, it's the trade deficit, uh, the fact that we don't develop our own oil, but instead we import it. We should now be energy independent. That would be worth three million jobs. If we did something about the China crisis with trade, you know, the, our deficit with China keeps growing and growing and growing. Well, those are jobs, and we don't yeah. deal with it. Uh, those are jobs. But also, all of this regulation and Obamacare and I mean every time something happens the president wants to hire a yeah. thousand new regulators that makes businesses run for the run, yeah. for, run to Asia and, and Steve all of this I mean set aside the human toll of a war in Syria and let's just talk about the money and the economics of it is it good or bad for the economy because I can see oil prices spiking are bad but you know I don't know I learned in economics class that war can be good for the economy yet I don't, you no, have no, to replace no. Melissa, the, no. okay. come on I'm, tr I'm trying to be fair I'm trying to go with both sides yeah. go ahead um, Steve war is never good for the economy I yeah. mean if you want to put people in uniform and you want to blow, uh, blow up buildings and then uh, rebuild, rebuild them, them I guess it's for good for the economy but but I, I would make the point look uh, Syria is a negative on the economy but I don't think that's what's really slowing uh, things down here I, I think it's the, the factors that Peter mentioned and the fact that you know this the president just hasn't made job creation the highest. I mean, he says he has, but as an example, I mean, a month ago, in the midst of this very high unemployment rate and this high um, uh, crisis in labor force part participation, he starts talking about, you know, climate change and global warming, which, you know, is not the highest priority yeah. right now when we got 20 million people who can't find a full-time job. No, that's absolutely true. Uh, uh, and, and Peter, today when the G20 met, instead of dealing with the life or death issue that they had in Syria going on right now, they decided to go after corporate tax loopholes and talk about you know going after companies like Apple that are incorporated in Ireland and are, aren't paying any taxes as a result. This was their press, pressing, pressing issue and maybe what's wrong with the global economy. Well, absolutely. The, the governments right now are all like the government we have in Washington. They're obs obsessed with raising taxes. Right. You know, whether it's uh, the, the city of Alexandria where I live, or the federal government, or the government of Germany. I mean, G Germany's answer to, 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 to Ireland's problems was it should raise its corporate taxes as high as it was. And the other thing they are talking about is Syria. You know, I, Syria is not the reason we are having this lousy jobs report. But Syria, if that goes badly, and it has the real potential to go badly, could destabilize Turkey 
technology, and it could be the thing that sinks the global economy as that ripples across the Mediterranean. Well, uh, don't kid yourself. Something. This let thing is really quick. dangerous. You, you can't hang on. Go ahead, Steve. Last let me part. add something to this. You know, here is why domestic oil production is so vitally Correct. important as an economic yeah. issue and as a national security issue. I mean, if I believe, Peter, in the next five or yeah. ten, well, ten years, we can be virtually uh, oil independent. And if five we years. are, that, that dramatically changes the world picture and our yeah. vulnerability to these kinds of crises in the Middle East. That's a great point. I want to end on that. You guys are both right. And at least that's a hopeful point Where did you get on. your... Melissa, where did you get your economics training no, that they no. told you war is good? <laughs> but you've heard that. It's just like what you said. You blow up a building, you rebuild it, you put people to work. It's the broken window theory. You know yeah, what I'm talking about. But we don't <laughs> okay. buy it. We just were forced to learn it at some point <laughs> okay. in a class, like so many other things. Thanks to both of you. Thank you.